From London, I'm Rochelle Travers, and this is The Standard. The sound of the London Stock Exchange being opened. But is the city's status as a leading financial centre under threat? There are fears over the London stock market as more major companies are tipped to leave. A huge gap in the value of similar companies in London and New York is putting pressure on chief executives to switch their listing, something that could be devastating to the capital. Amongst those rumoured to be considering quitting London is the giant shell, a move that would turn the situation into a full city crisis. Joining me now is The Standard's financial editor, Simon English. Simon, why is there an exodus currently happening with major companies from the London stock market? Well, the issue is just that the companies aren't getting enough love from uh, investors. So what companies see is that very similar companies that are listed typically in New York have a much higher valuation than, than they do. And that's putting a lot of pressure on chief executives and boards to do something about that. And a awful lot of them have either decided to vacate the stock market altogether or they've moved their listing typically to New York. Who are some of the big companies that have left London then? Well, the most notable ones is a company called Tui Travel, which we might know better as Thomson Travel, a huge travel company. And it quit London altogether to move its stock market listing to just to Germany. Flutter is uh, a huge bookies. It owns Paddy Power and lots of other high street bookies that, that you'll be familiar with. That moving its listing to New York was a real, a real blow. And then below that, what we've had is lots and lots and lots of much smaller businesses, tech companies that, you know, you might have hoped would one day turn into the next Apple or the next Microsoft. All of those companies either letting themselves be bought out by uh, a private equity company or moving their listing. And there's there's been scores of those and the fear is many more to come. Do we know of any others potentially considering leaving? So the name that, that, that comes up most often, and they have mooted it themselves, is Shell. That will be a real shock to the system because they're huge and kind of seen as an integral part of the London share scene. And they, they pay a huge amount of money uh, every year in dividends that, that that go to your pension fund and to mine. Uh, and, and they're mooted and, and that, that would be a shock. And some of the others are, are companies like Pearson, which is a, a big educational company, the National Grid. And Bunzel is another name that comes up as a, a companies that have got a big American presence already. And the only reason for them to be listed in London is because it suits them. And increasingly, it doesn't look like it does suit them. What are the reasons behind why the London stock market is like this? Some people say Brexit is still the issue. And certainly, I think for international investors looking on at the situation, they still find Brexit uh, confusing. They, they can't understand why we did it. And it makes them nervous. But there are other bits of the city that, that function in just fine. So the insurance market is huge and that's, that works perfectly okay. The bond market uh, is fine. It even managed to recover quite quickly from Liz Truss. And, and other parts of the city, like the, the legal services, there's lots of huge law firms, well, they're all fine too. And so they've, they've dealt with Brexit. So the question is, if, if, if Brexit is the issue, or well, why hasn't the stock market got to grips with it yet? Some people say that the problem is the company that runs the London Stock Exchange itself. So the London Stock Exchange Group is this vast company that sells data to investors all over the world. It's run by this uh, American former Goldman Sachs guy called David Swimmer. And uh, there's a feeling that maybe they just aren't the right owners of the stock market because to them, it's a small part of their business. And there's a feeling that they've they've almost allowed it to fall into a state of disrepair. Now, they, they would deny that very strongly. They say oh, that's not true at all. And they think the exchange is a really important part of what they do. And the chief executive said said recently he thinks the problem is just that we're a bit too um, glum in this country. That we're he thinks it's it's just natural British pessimism and this desire we have to talk ourselves down that has added to this this kind of you know, feeling that that shares aren't worth buying here. He says if we had a bit more get up and go about us, a bit more sort of New Yorky style optimism, this problem would go away. I don't, I don't really think he's right about that. I think it's much, it's much deeper problem than that. Um, and certainly it, it's been going on for 
so long, well, something's got to be done. As you mentioned there, we've seen this decline for a while now. In fact, in your article published in The Standard today, you've got some figures showing that through the years. Just tell us a bit about those. Okay, sure. So um, if if you go back to 2021, new companies uh, that were listing in London raised about £12 billion. That's not a a stellar year, but I mean, you know, £12 billion is quite a lot. Um, This year, the amount that um, investors have raised on the London Stock Exchange is less than £20 million. It's just like this extraordinary drop-off. What you've also seen is investors pulling money out of UK stock market funds, about £25 billion worth in the last two years. I think the the, the fundamental problem here remains that, that UK pension funds just don't invest very much in UK shares. So So your pension fund and mine will have about... 4% of its assets invested in, in UK shares. Now, for foreign funds, a French pension fund, say, it will typically have 30% of its investment in French shares. Um, and that just adds to the feeling for people who are on looking, on, on looking this situation. You've got international investors saying, well, well, the Brits don't even buy their own shares, so why should we? What can be done to encourage more businesses to stay listed in London and entice more? Well, I guess it comes back to the pension funds. They seem to be key to it. So some people think that the pension funds should just be ordered to own more UK shares as part of their portfolio. I don't personally like the idea of that. I don't think it should be ordained. But there's certainly ways in which pension funds could be given tax incentives where buying UK shares look like a much more attractive proposition than it suddenly does. And then you'd get a virtuous circle. You'd get the pension funds buying the shares, then the shares go up, then CEOs are happy for their listing to stay in London. And then we go back to something like we like we used to be, which is we ran this very dynamic um, stock market that, that people, you know, fought to get into. Let's go to the ads. Coming up in part two... Well, the most striking reaction I had was from a guy called Terry Smith. Uh, He's probably one of um, the most successful investors the UK has ever produced. He he looks after about £35 billion. And when I asked him why he doesn't buy that many uh, UK shares, I mean, his response was striking. He said most of the UK stock market is just uninvestable. The Standard Podcast will be back in just a moment. Welcome back. Still with me is Simon English, The Standard's financial editor. In May, the London Stock Exchange is going to start accepting applications for cryptocurrencies. Could this help turn the situation around? It might do. Um, this is only, only my opinion, is I wish the London Stock Exchange wouldn't go chasing after every new fad in the way that it, it does. It begins to look a bit Desperate. So every time there's a, uh, uh, you know, some some new industry emerges. Lately, it's been AI. Previous to that, it was cryptocurrencies. London says, well, well let's make us the home um, of those companies and let's chase after them. I, I, I actually think it's rather unbecoming. It doesn't do a lot for our reputation. The way it used to be and the way it should be is that the London Stock Exchange is this club that's quite difficult to get into, and if you can't. Uh, abide by the rules, well, then you can't come in. What, what we've got at the moment is, situ- is a situation where the LSE and the and leading politicians, you know, the Prime Minister even, are phoning round companies and saying, come on, why don't you come to London? It's right, as I say, it's rather unbecoming and it, it sort of adds to the idea that, that, that we look a bit desperate. So I, I, I don't think cryptocurrencies are the, are the solution to, uh, to this problem, no. How would you describe the state of the London stock market currently? It's just moribund is the main issue. It's, it's, it's dysfunctional, I think, is, the, is perhaps the, the best way of looking at it, certainly when compared to other bits of the city. The stock market is just one bit of what the city does, right? Um, it's the most visible bit. It's the bit that we talk about most often. It's the bit that, that people find easiest to understand. And the trouble is, it's just done nothing for about 10 years. It's gone nowhere useful for anybody. So um, if you'd... In the last five years, 
uh, if you could put some money into the FTSE 100, well, you've made about 6 or 7% on your money uh, over that period. I mean, you'd make more in the, the worst paying building society account available. If you put money into American shares over that period, well, you're, you're up closer to 50 and 60%. You've done well. And that trend doesn't look like turning around anytime soon. What have fund managers been saying to you about the situation? Well, the most striking reaction I had was from a guy called Terry Smith. Uh, he's probably one of um, the most successful investors the UK has ever produced. He's, he's sometimes described as our answer to Warren Buffett, you know, the most successful investor ever. He's got uh, His fund is called Fund Smith. He, he looks after about £35 billion. Pounds. And when I asked him why he doesn't buy that many uh, UK shares, I mean, his response was striking. He said most of the UK stock market is just uninvestable, is the word that, that he uses. He doesn't think enough companies there uh, are of high enough quality uh, for him to bother with. And, and one of the points that, that he made that was striking is that Microsoft on its own is bigger than the whole of the London stock market. And if things carry on like this, what could it all mean for the city? Well, it's bad. So as I was saying at the moment, it's a problem with the stock market uh, and other bits of the, the city work just fine. The worry is that supposing somebody like Shell does decide to decamp to New York, let's say, well, it, it takes lots of other, other business with it. So uh, a company as vast as Shell, well, it, you know, it, it will have lots of insurance. So it will do lots of business with Lloyds of London. It will employ lots of bankers to give it advice. It will certainly have lots of London lawyers that are on its books. And if it goes, well, it's not just the, the stock market listing that's lost. It's all those other things. And at, at that point, if you do get that trickle uh, turning into a flood, at that point, it stops just being an issue for the stock market. And it becomes an issue for the whole city of London, which in turn becomes an issue for the you know, the whole economy. You can read more from Simon English and about the London stock market in the Evening Standard newspaper or on our website, standard.co.uk. And that's it from this episode. This podcast is back tomorrow at 4pm. <laughs>